Welcome to Engineering Unboxed, where every day is Christmas. We're going to make big power in our dino cells, and that means we need more fuel. So we called our friends at Aeromotive. I'm Gail Banks. If you're into racing, you've heard the name Aeromotive. You can't walk through the pits in an NHRA event without seeing the name everywhere. That's because it's one of the most trusted names in fuel management. They even won the 2018 SEMA Manufacturer of the Year Award, beating Hunter, the wheel balancing guys, and Edelbrock. Of their 26 employees, six are engineers. That's 23% of the staff. Kind of sounds like banks. And all Aeromotive products are American made. You gotta love that. As you know, I love family-owned businesses, and Aeromotive is a fantastic example. This automotive story starts with John Matuzic. As a young man, John fled from Hungary in 1956 as the Russians were taking over. He came to America with nothing more than the clothes on his back, and he spoke no English. Get this, John taught himself to read and write by reading magazines like Hot Rod. In the mid-60s, completely self-made, John found himself racing top eliminator, mostly at Pittsburgh International Dragway. And he ran roadsters, front engine diggers, and rear engine dragsters. He was even named the track champion in 1968, and in 2006 was inducted into the Pittsburgh International Dragway Hall of Fame. All this from a guy who came to the country with no money, couldn't read or write. Talk about a self-made man. Aeromotive was founded in 1994 by John's son, Steve Matuzic. Growing up, Steve spent his summers with his family at the track, and he obviously liked it. <laughs> Steve went on to earn a degree in aerospace engineering and an MBA in marketing. Talk about some serious chops. But Steve's not just the head of the company. He's a racer, just like his father. Steve races pro stock and pro mod. In 2017, Steve won a Wally in NHRA pro mod at Houston Raceway. He's also a two-time NMRA winner. That's the National Muscle Rod Association. Currently, Steve's racing NHRA pro mod in his 2020 Mustang Cobra and it's running a 512-inch Allen Johnson Hemi and a pair of 88-millimeter Garrett turbos. You got to see this footage. And get this, Steve's not the only Matuzic that's been bitten by the racing bug. His three daughters are racers, and they have been involved in the business as well. Like I said, it's a family affair. So let's see what Airmotive has sent us. We've actually got two boxes. We'll start with this one, which is quite heavy. All right. Well, we know there's Airmotive inside. Put this over here. All right. Well, this is a hat for setting up these regulators for low pressure. We've got kind of a unique range of pressure demand going here. So here we have all the hardware to mount this cap, including the adjusting screw and jam nut. and not two, but three low pressure springs. And what do we got in here? Ah, oh my. Well, these have got to be, yep, pumps. Okay. And now this baby. I feel like a kid in a candy store with this stuff. These guys make really serious equipment in their motive. And they've been at it, as I said earlier, 26 years. Actually, I didn't say 26, but I just did the math in my head. So 
Aha, regulators. Well, let's start with the pumps. They've got, a, at, at Airmotive, they have a series of pumps that are brushless and quite powerful, I might add. And they range from three and a half to 10 gallons per minute. Now, if you have something that's burning 10 gallons per, per minute, you're making some serious power. Okay. We chose the five gallon per minute or 300 gallon per hour size. While I want high pressure capacity, and uh, by that I mean I want a pump set, set up that will give me 250 gallons an hour or maybe more. We've looked at kind of automotive stuff. This is race stuff. And we've used some automotive grade equipment and I can't quite get the regulated values I'm looking for. I got the high pressure I was looking for where I needed 90 to 100 PSI, I got 90. And I got a regulator that would work with, with that. But I also needed 15 to 20 PSI. And all I could get was a regulator for carburetors. And even with screwing, hot rodding that regulator a little bit, we're only able to achieve a little over 13 PSI at that particular diesel injection pump inlet. Well, I'm looking for 15 minimum. So Eric in our mechanical engineering group, I kind of tasked him with the fuel requirements in both Dyno 1 and Dyno 2. I was looking for a pump that would supply what I need at the 15 to 20 pound range and not lose a lot of that capacity up at 100 pounds. And oh, by God, did we find that. So we ran some pump flow comparisons, and we found that this line of aeromotive pumps, starting with their part number 11195 through their part number 11198, which gives you 210 gallons per hour, 300 gallons per hour, 420 gallons per hour, and 600 gallons per hour. I don't know what you're running with that, <laughs> but I'd like to see it go. Uh, these pumps needed to run methanol, ethanol, diesel, and gasoline. But particularly diesel, uh, the, their pumps are rated for diesel. So in this series of brushless pumps, we found that the flow drop between 10 pounds and 100 pounds pressure was only a like 10 or 11%. Other guys had 26% and 50%. In other words, it's rated, let's say it's rated at 300 gallons per hour at 10 pounds. But at 100 pounds, it'd be 150 gallons per hour. Well, that's not what I'm looking for. I need a pump that does both. These do that. This brushless motor, and I assume the motor changes with the flow rate, as I assume the pumping unit changes with the flow rate. They all have this section, which is the motor control section, which is integrated, not separate. Something you have to tack somewhere and run wires to and from. First thing I was looking for was pretty flat flow versus pressure. And these guys are it. I chose the 300 gallon per hour because it fits most anything we're likely to do in the near future. Let me give you some diesel flow numbers. The green trace is the one I'm talking about and we're at about, at 10 pounds, about 2,100 pounds of diesel per hour and dropping at 100 pounds to just under 2,000. A whole lot of that will be supplied to the engine and used to cool the injection components and then return to the tank. With spark ignition engines, you've got other injection systems. I've seen them returnless, which I personally don't like. Uh, I don't like cooking the fuel in the rails while you're at idle uh, up in the fuel temperature. I like the idea of returning it to the tank. 
and hopefully, hopefully it cools there. The main thing here is most modern systems have return fuel. So you're not only fueling the power demand of the engine, you're also returning some of the fuel to the tanks. So that adds to the demand for the pump. This pump has a power and ground lead, and it also has this magic little yellow lead. If you connect the yellow lead to, to a 12 volt source that's switched, pump turns on, runs constant speed, full output. If you connect the yellow lead to ground, pump turns on and runs at the lowest speed. You can also wire this to be a two speed, low and high, by installing a switch and appropriately wiring the yellow wire. But the part I really like, if you connect this to a sensor output, like the throttle position sensor, zero to five volts, you have a constantly variable pump speed that's proportional to the throttle position. Personally, I, I'd like to make it more proportional to the fuel demand of the engine at any given time. Well, there's a number of things you could look at. You could look at air fuel ratio, uh, make some decisions there. You could look at fuel flow, make some decisions there. You could look at air mass flow, make some decisions there, and tie this to engine speed. Uh, you, you could look at cylinder fill percentage, uh, air density in the manifold, intake manifold, manifold air density, MAD. Uh, listen, all this stuff you can look at and tune the output of this pump. Now, why do you want it to be tunable? If you have this much pump, run it through a regulator. The regulator has a return to the tank. If this thing's running full song, the engine's idling, you're returning most of the fuel to the tank. Now, a lot of hot rod guys are running 15 to 20 gallon tanks. 20 might be a big tank for a lot of hot rods. You keep doing this. You say you're cruising Hollywood Boulevard or Colorado the, the night before the Rose Parade like we used to do. Pretty soon, the fuel in the tank gets hot because you're doing work to the fuel, running it through this pump. With a variable speed, you're able to pull down the pump speed, heat the fuel less, burn less amperage off your electrical system, and have it when you need it. So I'm not sure of the transient response of this pump, how quickly it responds. Once we get them in the dyno cell, we start running these TVS controllers. I'll tell you a lot, a lot more about how we make them dance. True variable speed, minimum flow decay versus pressure. They kill everybody. Oh, by the way, the flow numbers are at 13 and a half volts. Some of the other pumps we had data on, we discovered were tested at 16 volts. All, all, all I can tell you is these guys have the best data, in our opinion, the best design. And get this, these things are intended to go 125, 150,000 miles on the street. Let me place this aside and let's have a look at one of the regulators. By the way, this stuff is eye candy. Ah, okay. All right, the standard regulator. It's a part number 13137. And it comes with, of course, the regulator itself, nice little mounting bracket, integral on the regulator. And we have an extra spring. So to install the low pressure spring, you can see immediately that the hat is shorter for the low pressure spring. And when you look at the high pressure spring, this is one stout rascal. There you go. Now that's quite a range of spring there. So out of the box, the pressure range is 30 to 75 PSI. Changing to the high pressure spring, you go from 75 to 120 PSI. First thing is the size of the inlets, outlets, and bypass uh, are all dash 12 O-ring boss, ORB, 
so you can thread in those beautiful AN style fittings. It has a boost reference capability, which is one to one, one, one pound to boost increases the fuel pressure of one pound. And for our lower pressure applications, the installation of this spring and this cap gives us a range of three to 21 PSI. So now we've got a regulator that works from three PSI to 120 PSI. Inside the control orifice, if you will, is 500 thousandths in diameter. So this thing is not going to choke any of the pumps. Basically, these regulators are good for pumps up to 32 gallons a minute. If you've got somebody else's mechanically driven pump, here's your regulator. And as with the pumps, gasoline, E85, which is ethanol and gasoline, pure ethanol, methanol, and diesel, all compatible. So why do we have two pumps and four regulators? Because we, we've got two dyno cells and we run two different types of engines in those cells. We'll have two low pressure and two high pressure setups. So basically one pump per cell and then we'll have two regulators which we can change just using valving from one to the other. So to the team over at Airmotive, thank you for hooking us up with these parts. We're gonna make some big horsepower with this stuff. Stay tuned.